Welcome, everybody. I see somehow you snuck into my my living room again. I don't know how you guys do that every <laughs> single week or every other week. Yeah, put your clothes on. <laughs> well, just a shirt. I don't need to wear pants. This is Zoom. <laughs> pants are not required. See, that's the thing. After the, the pandemic, there had to be a shortage of pants. <laughs> You having trouble hearing, John? No, I hear you. Muted, John. Yeah, let me unmute John. There you go. We having trouble hearing me? I think John's having trouble, period. <laughs> Say something, John. <laughs> uh oh, poor John. He's gonna have to log out, and log back in. I think <laughs> this is this is something that you don't have in real comedy. Let's see, you don't have the problem of the uh, mic not working for you and working for everybody else. Just not yeah, John. Why don't you go ahead and log out, log back in? Can you hear me? I think you can hear me. Mm -hmm. Hang on, let me let me send him a little text message. Okay, so I texted him. Everyone else can hear me, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Go ahead and say something, oh, Jeff. Let me hello. See good. Nice to be here tonight. Hey, everybody. Okay, all right, so we're good. We'll have to, hopefully, John got that message. All right. So as, as I've been with, um, with the pandemic, I, I'm surprised that somebody didn't uh, make a mint selling pants because for two years, nobody wore pants. Then of course, after the pandemic, we go to put our pants on, none of them fit because we gained like 35 pounds. <laughs> hey, can you hear me, John? All right. Uh, so yeah, it's like this. There's so many people that, I mean, I, I have like six pairs of pants that I have in, in the drawer that's basically, I hope to fit in them again drawer. <laughs> my, um, my daughter uh, decided to move just after the quarantine was over. So it's like in a year and a half. I have not done anything. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, not in shape. So she's, of course, on the third floor. So we're carrying some two flights of stairs. By the time we're done, I am panting like a dog in heat. I'm, I'm hunched over like a spring breaker after the third keg has been drained. The cat who hates everybody is rubbing on my leg, looking at me with those eyes that says, hey, if you're going to die, can you do it here? I haven't had meat in years. <laughs> um. Been, been a rough time, been a rough time. Uh, before I get more into that, um, we do have uh, set up nation sites for our comics. Uh, the past two years have been tough on, on comedy. Uh, hard enough making a living in comedy when things go well, when you can't leave the house or go to the bar to perform. Makes it a little difficult to, to do much. So if you, uh, if you enjoy the show, the show is free. I don't want to pressure anybody to do anything that they're not, that they're not comfortable with. If you don't want to give anything, that's fine. We want your applause. We want your laughter. That is our first and primary cocaine. We need it. But if you enjoy it, uh, please uh, consider dropping a couple of dollars into the uh, the donation. We have um, paypal.me forward slash button down comedy. And on Cash App, we have dollar sign button down comedy. Um, anything you donate will go to the comics. Uh, so please 
to that. Also uh, on Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, uh, Twitter, Button Up Comedy. Follow us. We have these shows on the second and fourth uh, Friday of every month. If you're in the Asheville area or nearby or find yourself in the Asheville area, the first Friday of every month, we are starting up our live shows again. So please you know, follow us. And I also post other things that are going around uh, both on the web and in the uh, area. So you might find some other things you enjoy doing too. I've been uh, had a scratchy throat the other day. And so I texted my friend and I was sucking on some holes. My phone said I was sucking on some balls. <laughs> I did not know my phone knew me so well. <laughs> I, I was running a little behind, so I texted that I'm, I'm going to be late. My phone said I'm going to be Kate. I could have sworn I deleted those pictures. I, I really thought I deleted those pictures. But that does explain the Facebook post. Damn it, Siri. <laughs> Uh, I've been, uh, I, I like, you know, these old sayings you hear. I always like finding the origin of some of these sayings. Are you guys familiar with the term to drop a dime on somebody? Yeah. Uh, it means to turn them into the police. Does anybody know where that comes from? Well, it comes from making a call on a payphone to the police. Oh. When a dime, you dropped a dime on somebody. Now, for those of you who don't know what a payphone is, that's the <laughs> We had this device in public. You could walk up, you could put money in, it had like this little, this little handle thing that you could pull, hold up to your ear. They had buttons <laughs> on it, or early ones had a little rotary circular thing called a rotary dial. And you could make phone calls public. Superman used to use the little booth. No, you know, never mind. No. <laughs> but, uh, the last time I saw one of those, it was like 45 cents. So the phrase, to drop a quarter and two dimes in somebody just doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> and then there's one of my favorites. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. First of all, where's this fucking horse he's giving out gifts? <laughs> and why the hell is he putting them in his mouth? I think, that, I think that's where don't beat a dead horse comes from because he didn't have gifts. <laughs> and who named a blowjob? There's no blowing. It is the worst name for an activity ever. I mean, you think about it, eating out a woman is not really accurate either. I mean, technically, you kind of flip them and blowing kind of fits there and eating kind of fits. Yeah. And as guys, you know, you think eating out, you think, you know, tablecloths and restaurants, but we're fine with a food truck and a foot long. I'm sure you guys heard about the kerfuffle on the plane where people were playing Christian music really loud. Yeah. And the whole discussion is, is it, you know, anti, anti-Christian, anti-religion. You know, I take earphones with me on the plane so I can listen to my music without disturbing other people around me. So I don't really care whether you want to play Christian music or rap music. Muslim prayer. Shut the fuck up. It's a play. They have a name for loud music in a confined area. The CIA calls that torture. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, it's got a little dark. Let's, let's get a little upbeat. Dick jokes. It's okay, it's a short, doesn't take long. It's not very hard. <laughs> that is full of dick jokes but the funny thing is we don't have a lot of ball jokes balls do not get respect I mean they're there hanging out with the guys and what happens the women walk right by them to that tall skinny prick every damn time <laughs> and does he bother to introduce us to the girl no half the time he shoves us aside and introduces her to some asshole and there we are carrying his stuff. And what does he do? He leaves it in random socks whenever he has the opportunity. Well, that is my time. I'm going to let you guys get on to our main attractions. Our first comedian, uh, he is 
and I have it. I have the notes here. Covered them up. I apologize. It's all my fault. Okay, he has performed in Gotham Comedy Club, and is a favorite in the Washington D.C. area. Please give it up for Jeff Heisen. Thank you, George. Hey, everybody. Oh, it's nice to be here. Oldest comic of the night. That's why George put me on first, because it's almost bedtime. I had a show not long ago, and before it began, the other comics were discussing the effects of drug use on comedy. They asked me my opinion, and I said, Lipitor has no effect. <laughs> I had another show and DJ asked me what song I wanted to hear while I walked on stage. And I said, Uptown Funk, sung by Bruno Mars, because that's my jam. <laughs> and he played Tiny Dancer by Elton John. <laughs> Not exactly the same. I asked him why. He said, you're old. I thought it was more appropriate. <laughs> oh, that's not nice. When you get older, women look at you differently. We become distinguished. Oh. Yeah, I know how a woman in her 30s distinguishes me from you guys. She's distinguishing me from someone she'd have sex with. I was uh, with, with a young female comic. And I stared at her t-shirt trying to figure out what it said. And perhaps I looked for a little too long because I saw that she was uh, looking at me, looking at her shirt. So I said, I'm sorry. I was just trying to read your shirt. And she said, that's okay. And I said, no, it's not okay. A man shouldn't make a woman feel uncomfortable. And she said, I don't think of you that way. <laughs> I can't even be pervy anymore. I don't need to be reminded I'm older, but sometimes people call me sir. Don't do that. Sir is just a young person's way of politely calling me grandpa. <laughs> Think of me as your contemporary who just happens to have lived several decades longer than you. <laughs> but again, I don't need to be reminded that I'm getting older unless you're going to save me money. Then yes, I'm old. Yeah. I want my senior discount and I want it now and I want it for everything. Just give it to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't live this long to pay full price to see cats. <laughs> and I don't want to join your shoppers club. I don't want any more coupons. CVS has that covered. <laughs> Just give me the discount. The point is, I may be over 60, but I'm not going anywhere yet, unless there's a senior discount. <laughs> now, if you're looking for a comedian who's going to curse tonight, that's not me. I'm a clean comic because I don't curse on stage. I'm not against cursing. It's just that no one wants to hear their father curse. So one night I was asked to open a show for a gospel comic. And it was a good show, but before it began, the host asked all of us to gather together, close our eyes, hold hands, and pray for a good show. That's fine, except another comic asked me, does that offend you as a Jew? And I said, no, but I've heard your act, and you should have been praying for better material. <laughs> showed him I have a day job some of you are going good you need one thank you <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lawyer hold your applause for lawyers but I don't like talking about being a lawyer when I'm on stage and I think that's because we don't know each other yet and when people are introduced to a comedian they say nice things like, tell me a joke, <laughs> say something funny. That doesn't happen with lawyers. <laughs> the lawyer and says, tell me a statute. <laughs> say something in Latin. <laughs> and sometimes I get my jobs confused 
One day I was in court and the opposing counsel said, I object, but I forgot where I was and I thought he was a heckler. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned to him and said, I object to your face. Yeah. And the judge looked at him. I'm trying to talk about it. Eh? And the judge looked at him and yeah. said, objection sustained. I was. Oh yeah, I'll take a burrito. <laughs> is there another show going on while I'm doing this? And just checking. <laughs> is there a multiverse here? Maybe. I was online at the deli, and I looked up and I saw a sign that said "Managers Special." What an ego! <laughs> I'm sure his mother thinks so. But I'm not so sure. So I get to the front and I ask the clerk, if the manager's special, then what am I, chopped liver? So she gave me chopped liver. <laughs> and it wasn't that special. Someone should tell the manager. <laughs> One thing we've learned over the past few years is that corporations really care about us. I bought shoes online and immediately received an email which said, thank you for joining us in our mission to create a more sustainable future. I did no such thing. All I did was pay for comfortable footwear. I didn't pay to join a cult. And the next day there was another email which said, with your next purchase, we will feed a starving child. Don't threaten me. <laughs> They're holding some poor kid hostage in the shoe factory <laughs> until I buy more overpriced shoes. That's horrible. You got them, you feed them. This isn't on me. <laughs> and the next day there was another email inviting me to their Instagram page where we post about the human experience. Oh, thanks for the warning. Hard pass. <laughs> you see, they're just shoes, at least to me. I don't think about them that much. One day I went to work wearing mismatched shoes. And it's not like they were a little bit different. One of them was black and the other was a slipper. <laughs> And I didn't notice until three in the afternoon. <laughs> no, no chopped liver for my wife. She's a lactose intolerant pescatarian. Mm. That's not as sexy as it sounds. <laughs> you want to go out to dinner with us? No, you don't. <laughs> we go to a restaurant and I just sit there while she scrutinizes the menu looking for contraband ingredients <laughs> like dairy or flavor. And then the poor waiter comes over and she interrogates him. Does this taste good? It does. Do people like it? They do. Then I can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor's orders. And neither can my husband. Wait, what? It sounds yeah. delicious. Let's go. Sometimes I just wait in the car, <laughs> especially if I'm wearing my slippers. Tell you a little bit more about myself. I got in an elevator recently. Well, thank you. <laughs> I gets in and starts talking about politics in an elevator. You can't do that, especially these days. That's a breach of elevator etiquette. You see, I believe there are only three acceptable topics of conversation in an elevator. The days of the week, not bad for a Monday, TGIF, the weather, and the classics, the speed of the elevator. We got a local, we got an express. 
That's it. That's the entirety of the elevator conversation universe. But not everyone's catching on. I got in an elevator with two women. I press three, they press five. One of them turns to the other and asks, so how was your date? And the other one said, it was so romantic. We had dinner, then we went back to his place and then we, and they turned to look at me as the door opened on my floor. But I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I wanna know what happened. <laughs> So one of them asked, isn't this your floor? And I said, yes, but that was before I knew you had a date. <laughs> Please keep talking. I'll just stand in the corner. It won't be creepy at all. <laughs> and as for that guy that started talking about politics, I got so mad, I pressed all the buttons and told him about my colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> See how he likes that. And I've been married a long time. On the day of our anniversary, I went to my wife's Facebook page and I wrote, happy anniversary to my wonderful wife. This counts as a card. <laughs> she didn't mind. We've been married for so long, we just get each other whatever cards are on sale. You don't know how many times we celebrated Kwanzaa. <laughs> I've been married for so long, I've forgotten what sex is like when you're single. There's a single guy at work. He said, I can't wait to go home. My girl's going to be there and we're going to have sex tonight. And I said, but it's Tuesday. <laughs> and you'll see. My wife said, I need a new purse. And I said, I only have one wallet. I don't see why you need to have more than one purse. And she said, I don't see why we need to have more than sex, have sex more than one time a week. I hadn't thought about it that way. <laughs> so I bought her seven purses. <laughs> and it's so nice to be getting back to normal, doing normal things, but some things haven't changed from the pandemic. I went to bed last night. I looked down in the bed and I saw this sign. <laughs> Message received. My name is Jeff Heisen. Thank you, George. Thank you, everybody. Let's get Jeff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I had I had that whole pervy uh, old guy uh, issue when my daughter wanted to go to the uh, bathroom at Disney World, and I had oh. to stand outside. <laughs> I just look like I'm trying to pick up chicks as they leave the bathroom. You know, not a good life. No. All right, our, uh, our next comic is a vegan who just got back from Whole Foods. <laughs> uh, and she is without a doubt our next comic. And please, let's give a big round of applause for April Waltershine. You have the energy. If you're vegan, clap. If you don't, I understand. <laughs> Wow, this is really fun. I have enjoyed watching the first comic and I feel like we're all at a funeral right now. We're just like, you know, like at a sad birthday party or something. Zoom is, is interesting. Um, but my name is April, I'm named after March. Uh, and I look like Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus. <laughs> Stop at Ikea, watch the BBC News over here. <laughs> Um, I thought I'd switch it up from Whole Foods to Ikea. Um, I tried to return something the other day and they said, uh, I said it was a gift. And they're like, we don't, you need a receipt. And I'm like, it's a gift. Accept it. Accept that I'm returning something without a receipt. It's a gift. I got my mom on the phone. I turned like full Karen. I'm like, mom, tell them how you paid for this. <laughs> She's like, it was cash, honey. And they're like, we can't, Ikea is like, we can't help you. <laughs> I really put the Ikea background here to like get that out of my system. Oh my fucking God. Can I cuss in this? Yes. Great. <laughs> my mom was like, April, just buy another item and then use that receipt and return it. I'm like, oh, the Costco way. Got it. Okay. 
Uh, don't let Leon at returns hear that, even though he probably sees it all the time. But yeah, I look like Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus without the magic of the bus. <laughs> I live in LA. I'd be living in the bus. You know, if I had one, I'd be like hallucinating kids, memorizing their grades. I think she's on shrooms or something. I don't think those kids are real. I remember like they shrink themselves down. If you guys, you guys know the show, can I get a yes, yes. or like raise your hand or something on the Zoom? Yeah. 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 I mean, they shrink themselves down, go inside, go inside people's bodies and stuff. I mean, there was one bully on the show that I think he had asthma. So they all, you know, brought cats. They like told him to stay home. They all like brought cats to the class and they shrunk themselves down and went into his body and gave him asthma and they all died. That was a season finale. Because <laughs> he has asthma, he can't like, it's closing up, you know? And they're like, whoa, this is a bad idea. We're all stuck in here now. Uh, I do look like Kids Bop is my soundtrack. <laughs> like kind of fun, but like tired looking. Um, this is my favorite song. Fudge the police, fudge the police, <laughs> fudge the police. <laughs> It doesn't even go like that, but for the kids, Bob, it's gotta be like more upbeat, less yeah. crips, you know, less like you might get shot in a drive-by. So it has to be like more upbeat. Um, I did turn um, 37 this year. Can Ooh. you tell? <laughs> Are the exercises working? I'm doing like a lot of like, you know, exercises on my face and stuff. So I don't have to get surgery. I live in LA. I mean, it's everywhere. <laughs> People's faces look bloated everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I, so I don't have boobs yet. I turned 37. I thought they'd be here by now. Gosh, they're not here yet. Like, what is taking so long? Did I not drink enough child? Uh, did I not drink enough children? Sorry. Did I not drink enough water as a child? I went to the dentist yesterday to get a cleaning and look at these teeth. There's nothing wrong with them. He was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking at my teeth he's like god damn it there's another nothing fucking wrong with your teeth he like threw down his gloves threw down he like took the light thing that above you and he like slammed it against the wall <laughs> and then i'm like i'm on medical he's like oh we wouldn't have made money off of you anyway huh that's a <laughs> that's a uh state insurance um if anyone doesn't know <laughs> But uh, yeah, he just looked at my teeth and he's like, uh, your saliva's thin, uh, drink more water. You might have some bone loss. And I'm like, I'm 37, thank you. It's cool to actually have something going on in my life because I'm white, nothing ever happens. Um, I do watch murder docs. And <laughs> just to like fantasize, like, I mean, the guys are, it's always a guy, always, once in a while it's a woman, but it's always a guy. Have you noticed that their stand-up comedy special is the, they're in prison and they have a Netflix special about how they murdered people. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they set it up. They're just like, I'm gonna pick you up at eight. Um, we're gonna like have a nice dinner. The kids are gonna be at the babysitter maybe like for a little bit, then they're gonna come home. But bring it, when we have the kids at the babysitter, um, we're gonna have dinner. We're gonna like uh, get in a little fight. <laughs> I'm gonna have a tapestry ready to choke you with. And um, it's gonna be a fancy one though. It's gonna be a fancy dinner at home, fancy tapestry. And then I'm gonna take your body out into a pre-dug grave 20 miles away, bury you. And that's like a nice date, you know? That's <laughs> like, I mean, he plans it. That's so awesome. Like to get that much attention that somebody's like obsessively planning this. And then, you know, he goes with his mistress and he ah, gets caught anyway and he's in prison. Oh, and he has like a 10 hour interrogation. They're like, we know you did it. Like we found your thing. We found your reservation at your house, your fancy dinner reservations at your house. And we know you did it. Um, so that's really like the kind of attention I want. I don't want to die, but it's just like nice to have people plan stuff. Nobody cares anymore. Like everybody's apathetic, you know, but the murderer is not apathetic. He's really thinking stupid thoughts he's like what can i do to get caught <laughs> forever <laughs> he's not too smart but at least he plans um i i'm on some dating sites there's one for agnostics called is anybody out there 
I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then there's, I, I'm not on that one. I'm not agnostic. I know there's nobody up there. So uh, I'm on one called, uh, it's an atheist dating site. It's called Nobody's Out There. Shut up. <laughs> and if you're into rock, it's called Black Hole Sun. Won't you come? Don't believe in religion. There is no one. A black hole. So it sounds like a vampire singing. I love vampires because they're murderers, kind of. You know, I think I like murderers. I know three of them. They're in prison. They were my acquaintances. And I found out on Google that we run into 16 people in our lifetime who are getting away with murder. So you probably all know somebody. You probably went to Whole Foods today and like there's someone at the register who's a murderer and they're getting away with it. <laughs> <sighs> I am vegan. I don't know if you can tell by, like, by my energy or by like my vegan um, suede. No, I'm kidding. My vegan shirt. I have animals on here and it's a really uh, interesting animal. It's an animal that's like, fuck off 2020. You know, do you see it? Do you see it? I'm trying to show. Anyways, it's, it's, a, it's a cat flipping people up. Do you see that? Yeah, that cat is really cool. He's actually on billboards in LA just flipping people off as they drive. We're like, yeah, that's how we feel in traffic all the time. But yeah, here's my coming out story as a vegan because I need a coming out story because uh, uh, you know I'm a white woman, so I need something. Um, I bit into a piece of cheese that was sharp cheddar and never went back. Yeah, there it is. Um, don't go back. To sharp cheddar, if it cuts your tongue, they're putting razors in cheddar. Just become vegan. Don't eat cheddar. They're putting razors in there. That's why it's so sharp. Um, oh, uh, let's see. I want to travel. Um, I have a passport I needed to use. Does anyone have a passport they need to use? Has anyone never traveled outside the USA? Raise your hands. Everyone's traveled. I hate you all so much. Oh, I hate you all. Um, so, uh, I have this passport I need to use. And I think because of COVID-19, we should get an extra year because we couldn't travel for one of those years. So if it expires in 2027, I need 2028 to be the new expiration date, but I want to travel and I want to go to Great Britain and me and my cousin are always competing, uh, with each other on how much we love Great Britain. Like every day at 12 PM, I have a 12 course meal of tea and biscuits. I know that's a lot but I have a food stamps card. So I'm just always buying tea and biscuits, you know, from like Trader Joe's or, or like online, wherever I can. And I have a Mind the Gap um, placard in my room. My room is actually at Whole Foods. I, I've spent so much money there that they gave me an aisle. So <laughs> I, I have like a Great Britain flag hanging up over the teas, you know? <laughs> Um, and my cousin's like, April, you are such a goof. You don't have a job. I like, I don't have a job. This is what I do. Um, so she has a job and she's like, I don't have time to do what you're doing to show your love for Great Britain. So to one up me, this bitch, oh my gosh. One day she hopped on the freeway, went the wrong way on the freeway, got into a head on collision and died on impact. And I was like, whoa, damn Sarah. You love Great Britain more than I do. You can have that. I mean, you're dead. I can't compete with you anymore. So her parents were like super religious. So they're always trying to like put her on the right track in life, but she drove down the wrong one, obviously. Yeah, way to like, way to like flip off mom and dad, you know? <laughs> she actually, we don't really know if it was a suicide, if she drove down the wrong way on the freeway on purpose or like it was a suicide because she didn't leave a note. How bad at death do you have to be where people are like, what? I don't understand how they died. Like, we don't, like, could you leave a fucking note, Sarah? Like, we need to know, because people are asking, our last name is not common. So people are like asking like, why did she do it? We're like, she's dead, we don't know. Stop asking us, she didn't leave a fucking note. She's bad at death. Um, oh, uh, I want to do some impressions of some celebrities as vegan. Here's Britney Spears. Mm, yeah, oops, I didn't eat ham. I thought it was a vegetable. Ooh, my bad. Ooh, save me from my dad. 
that was on the record. If you play her uh, records backwards, it's like, save me from my dad. We <laughs> it was there the whole time. We just weren't looking for it. We weren't willing to, we weren't willing to scratch her CDs. I don't know if she put any L, you know, like regular records out, uh, the real ones. But um, okay, here's Bernie Sanders as a vegan. I want to make the whole country vegan. But just like my promise to forgive student loans, it's probably not going to happen. I'm going to run for maple syrup before I die in my own state, Vermont. I'm just going to become maple syrup when I die. Um, here's uh, Gilbert Godfrey doing a meditation for you guys from hell because he died recently. I don't know if you knew that. Here's a, okay, here it is. It's called Beach Relaxation, but it's more like Beach Relaxation featuring hell. Here it is. Close your eyes and bring yourself to a calm, quiet place in your mind. I am in hell. Wherever you are, you're doing better than I am right now. Breathe in and out. It's okay. I'm in hell. It's really hot down here. My voice has gotten louder, actually. So that is a meditation. And it's really not so much meditation as it is like haunting and causing insomnia. So uh, thank you guys for your time. I'm April O'Neil on Instagram, not the porn star. So I tried to sell her my Instagram. She doesn't make that much money in porn. So thank you for your time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Go for April. Woo! Yeah, I had a guy was telling me about the, the, um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja parody porn with the actual uh, April O'Neil in it, playing April O'Neil. And he called it a uh, an orgy. And I said, well, wait a minute. There's one girl that's either a train or, or a gangbang. It's not an orgy. Come on, church break. Uh, I get it. <laughs> so our next uh, comedian, he's headlined in 14 different countries. He's just at Zany's and Laugh Factory, please. Let's give it up for John McComb. Hello, hello. I was going to give a shout out to Roy because he was the only one with the guts to, to actually turn on his camera, but... Uh... <laughs> But he took off, apparently. Um, thank you for having me. Um, yes, all the comics uh, tonight have uh, backgrounds on our, um, on our Zooms because uh, we don't want you to see uh, the mental illness that exists behind <laughs> us, okay? Like, <laughs> honestly, like, my, my room is so dirty. Like, if I died and the police found my body, they wouldn't immediately be tell what happened like it, it would you're like was it foul play or was it depression we don't know you know um in any case uh i think i am the youngest one in this room i'm 31 um i don't know i don't know any about about the, the audience but um i did have a uh, walmart rotisserie chicken for dinner um <laughs> Yes, that is, uh, and as a uh, unmarried man in my 30s, that is our official bird, by the way. Um, <laughs> and, and look, I think, honestly, I, I've, tried to, I've tried to learn more recipes. I've tried to, to, you know, be a better cook. But can I just, can, we, can I look up a recipe online without having to scroll through someone's fucking life story? Like, <laughs> Honestly, like any time I look up, it's like this reminds me of summers in Tuscany. I'm like, Chili Mac, really? That's what <laughs> makes those fucking sense, man. I don't know. Um, any case, uh, sorry, I'm on a complaining mood here. I recently got over COVID. Um, I had it for for the first time. You know, I got over it and got it um, just in time for no one, literally no one, to give a shit honestly like i catch COVID now and nobody cares at all <laughs> um like i told I, I told my mother and she just texted me back you good like that's that's all i get you know and i remember when it first like when lockdown first happened somebody from my office uh caught it and uh literally he was one of the first people to catch covid and 
ABC, ABC News did a segment on him on the five o'clock news <laughs> and the Chicago Tribune wrote a front page article about him. And mm-hmm. he was he had all these he was um, posting about his daily updates on Facebook, got 10,000 followers on his Facebook page oh, from that. And I look back on that and I'm like, God damn it. Catching COVID then would have been the greatest thing to happen happened to me as a comedian right <laughs> like the following I could have gotten at least like a hundred people were stuck around like hey man this dying dude has some jokes though like that's <laughs> <sighs> so I missed out on an opportunity there but uh yeah I got I got over COVID I got the stealth Omicron which was I feel like they're just gonna keep naming the variants scarier and scarier names just to keep us caring <laughs> like the next one's going to be Megatron or, or Thanos variant or something. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah. So I had to wear a mask uh, for a while there. I didn't mind. I don't mind the mask. I'll be honest. I never minded the mask because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm clean shaven, you know, it don't, it doesn't bother me, but I do see these other men who have like these full beards and these tiny little masks covering them. And is there anything sadder than that, honestly? Just seeing a grown man walking around looking like a Greek woman in a bikini, you know? It's just... <laughs> it's just so... It's, and I know, you might ask yourself, why didn't he just cut it off? Okay, why don't you just cut off most of your personality, huh? <laughs> Are you supposed to know he's really in the hot sauce? Uh, <laughs> Anyways, I, the good thing that came out of COVID, I think, or one of the good things that came out of COVID is we started to show, you know, appreciation for our uh, uh, frontline workers, you know, nurses, doctors, because um, there are a lot of jobs that don't get any appreciation at all. Like, it's insane to me that there's a job literally called lifeguards, and we don't give a shit about those people. We a fifteen year old kid will save people from drowning, and then as soon as he does, we're like, okay, now fuck off back to your high chair, okay? <laughs> like, not gonna ruin my vacation, kidding me? I am gonna smoke in this pool. Fuck you, all right? <laughs> it just it's insane because like, look, my experience. I was in the military. I was I was in the Marine Corps, so I get applause for my job, and people think like. You know, you know, I, I get a, I get Veterans Day. Where's, where is the tutti, the free tutti fruity for lifeguards? Okay, why don't they get any free shit? I don't know. I never saved anybody from Riptide. You know what I did? I managed our unit's Facebook page. That's what I did. Right. <laughs> but I think it's because with lifeguards, we see the eighty five percent of their job where they're not doing anything. You know, mm-hmm. like. If people saw 85% of the military, it's just finding a quiet place to masturbate. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, I feel like any sexy job, if you see the 85% of the time where they're not doing like the thing you think that you associate with them, like, you know, a professional athlete, for instance, you know, you, you, you think they're, you know, the, uh, getting on sports center with the slam dunk or hitting home runs, you don't see the 85% of the time where they're just getting over chlamydia, right? <laughs> you, you think of like firefighters, you know, you see them pulling people out of burning buildings and, and, and kicking down doors. You don't see the 85% of the time where they're just yelling racial slurs at a ball game. Or DJs, you see them headlining clubs in Miami and whatnot. You don't see the 85% of the time where they're just, they're just selling Molly. <laughs> no. I don't know. Anyways, I, I was thinking about this over while I, ha- while I was having COVID um, and I was quarantined and I was watching um, documentaries. I got into uh, watching, I watched the uh, Kanye West documentary on Netflix. Um, and it fascinates me because like, Rappers, as 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 just as a as, as a population, fascinate me because it's a it's an entire community where every single one of them has to be like, I'm the best that ever did this shit. Like that's a like, and you're and like you're not even the best rapper on this song. Like every single rapper, <laughs> no matter 
where they're at in their hierarchy, in their career paths, there's no humility, okay? Like, you can't have a rapper promote a song like, yo, it's your boy out here, we doing it big, and I gotta say, I'm pretty decent, you know? Like, <laughs> you won't look me up, but if I come on your car radio, you won't switch me off. I'm an easy listen. <laughs> No other community is like that. No other, like, I'm not, like, imagine me telling jokes right now and be like, man, these jokes are so funny. I got everyone in here pregnant, men included. Like, <laughs> yeah, and meanwhile, like, there's a guy in a basement doing a show for three people right now, just like, I'm the greatest of all time. Like, that actually exists, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, do, like, like they even think about the fact that like in your job, I, I mean, your, your day job, whatever you do, we all have that one person at our job who thinks they're way better at it than they actually are. And we fucking hate that person, right? <laughs> yeah. They're the worst. Now imagine if everyone at your job was like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be the weird one for not saying you're the best. Like your boss would call you in like, look, I've gotten several complaints that you've been promoting an atmosphere of bitch assness around here, right? <laughs> and I'm not sure what your last workplace was like, but here at Google, we do not tolerate an atmosphere of some fuck shit, okay? So the last thing I want to do is outsource your job to India because we ran the numbers and they will stun on these hosts for much less. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb jokes, I know. Dumb jokes. <laughs> I was um, I was uh, watching the news a lot, and I know I noticed like a lot of people are steering away from talking about like the Russia Ukraine thing, and because it's honestly there's not a lot of good takes on it. <laughs> but I think the only positive of that whole situation is the president of um of Ukraine, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. Um, because uh, he made a lot of decisions people didn't really understand at first. And what they don't understand is he used to be a comedian, you know? So a lot of the things he did, I understood, you know, when he, when they were, you know, like the first night of the invasion, uh, the United States offered to evacuate him. And he said, no, fuck that. I need ammunition, not a ride. And I heard that and I was like, committing to the bit. I like this dude. I know where he's coming from, man. And he, he came out, and he, his social media game was on point. Did you see this shit? He was out here making videos on his, on, on his Twitter, like, yo, we're going we're, we're gonna to push out the invaders. So like, subscribe to the channel, hashtag shooting at Putin. There you go. <laughs> I like this dude, man. I know his shit. That's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. I don't know. I know there's a lot of people from all over the place uh, here with us tonight. So uh, I don't, I'm pretty sure it's it's gas prices where you're at too are probably insane. They're they're crazy here. Like the gas is gas is so expensive. Like every time I I drive by somebody in a Tesla, I just want to run them off the road. Right? Like does anybody else feel that way right now? You just want to punch Elon Musk in the dick right now? <laughs> it's like <laughs> damn electric cars. Um, and I don't know, man. I, 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 you know, I voted for Biden, but I'm like, God damn, this dude's fucking up hard right now. <laughs> you know, and I felt bad at, at, like during the um during the election where people were like, Oh, he's got dementia or something. Or like he's 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 senile. You know, I wanted to defend him, but now I'm like, Yeah, probably, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, even this dude was coming out saying, like, I remember he gave a speech. He's like, I'm going to make sure every American gets masks. We're like, we've had masks for like a year now, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? Crazy people have masks now. Like, that's not <laughs> people on the subway jerking off have masks on. It's over their chin and dirty as fuck, but they have it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's like, I kind of like him. To, I liken him to like, that uh, when you were a kid, you had like an older relative who would get you gifts for like birthday and Christmas and whatever that had zero relevance to your life. 
you know, he's like, oh, I, I heard you. I heard you like video games. Huh? Oh, oh, I got you a tackle box. It's got a Super Mario on it, though. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. He's just going to keep solving problems that don't need solving. He's like, I'm going to make sure every American gets AOL on my watch, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man. It's, uh, it's hot as shit here right now, finally, in Chicago. It's hot. It, it, and, you know, it's been a long winter, so I don't mind, actually. And uh, my girlfriend, she she is a winter person. She loves winter. She She loves the snow whatever and you know here in chicago we get it gets so cold here it gets what i call ashy cold i don't i don't none of you have your cameras on so i don't know what your skin color is but ashy cold let me explain if you're white (laughs) it's ashy cold is when your face looks 30 but your knuckles look 150 okay (laughs) ashy cold Yeah, and my girlfriend's like, but I love the snow. The snow is so good. I'm like, we live in Chicago. Have you seen the snow after a week? It's black, okay? That's what this, the snow is black here after a week. It is full of, of crack and evidence, okay? <laughs> I hit her with a snowball. She was like, ow, there's a syringe in that one. <laughs> yeah. but my, my, my girlfriend comes from, um, she, she's from Finland. So it comes from a place that's very cold. If y'all don't know anything about Finland, every single year, Finland ranks as the happiest country in the world. Seriously, I don't make this up. She, it ranks as the happiest country in the world. And we met in Chicago. She went from the happiest country in the world to Chicago. <laughs> like how many people do you think get shot in Finland every year? <clears throat> Not enough. That's how many people get shot. Right? And she takes this like happy go lucky finish energy and takes it to Chicago. We're walking around downtown. She's just walking around doing her finish thing like, hello. I'm like, yo, you got to chill. Right? <laughs> You're out here making eye contact with strangers. No, you got to use your peripherals in this city. You can't look directly at the bullshit. You kidding me? <laughs> oh, no. She's uh she's all right though she's she's good you see and her her uh, people ask me like you know um, is there any language barriers between you two and and no her English skills are very good um, however you know obviously English is not her first language so when she gets upset or tired or frustrated like she'll make mistakes which is fine but I'm one of those people who um, I will start to not inadvertently talk like whoever I'm talking to if they have like a strong accent. I don't know if anybody else has this experience. So whenever we have a fight, I start making more mistakes with her. And the longer the fight gets and more heated it gets, it just sounds like two people getting dumber and dumber and dumber. And until I I hear this shit coming out of my mouth and it's ridiculous. Like, like, oh, you lie me? You lie me? No, look through me eyes okay, and say me the truth. <laughs> say me the truth. I'm tired of this shitting fuck. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know. We met, uh, we, like I said, we met in Chicago, but we initially kind of got to know each other over Hinge, over a dating app. Um, and I know a lot of that's more common with like younger people's like meeting online and some people are still like ashamed to admit that they met their partner through tinder or hinge or bumble or whatever and i was thinking about it i'm like you know what in like 30 years meeting in person is going to be the weird thing (laughs) like you'll be telling your kids or grandkids the story of how you you and your spouse met they're like wait 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 what mom you were drunk (laughs) at karaoke (laughs) It's like, well, yeah, the way your father just slurred the lyrics to Uptown Girl. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I saw that glazed over look in his eye, and I knew that's the man for me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about him, like, 
Well, you know, there's some, some trade-offs there. I mean, people get weird about it, about meeting online, meeting people online, because they're like, oh, there's a lot of creepy people online. But, you know, li listen to any story of how two old people met and ask yourself if that's not the creepiest fucking story you ever heard. <laughs> Where your grandmother was like, well, you know, I, I, I didn't really like him all that much. And, but uh, uh, like he kept coming by my job and asking me out every day and, and until one day I just said, sure. And then we got married and <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, what? It's like, yeah, well, we were turning 21. So the clock was ticking, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I guess standards are different back then. That's why my, my grandmother was pressuring me to get married. She's like, come on, she's got a nice shirt, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Anyways, like I can say my girlfriend, she's from, from from Finland, which is in Europe. People back here, when I came back, asked me like, "What's the big difference between Europeans and Americans?" And I say it's the way we view sex, all right? Because Europeans are more conservative, or excuse me, Americans are more conservative about sex. Europeans are more liberal about sex, and I. Uh, the best example is like our sex toy store names, for instance, because our sex toy store names are all like secrets. They're all like Adam and Eve, taboo. We're going to go to the lion's den this weekend. Pick us up some toys. And in Germany, they're like, we're going to go to the dildo king this weekend. <laughs> Get us a butt plug that won't rust. We would go to fuck filet, but they're closed on Sundays, you know. <laughs> I don't think that we, we know a whole lot about sex in the United States. I, I blame our education system, personally. I do. Because, like, I, and I usually just, my usual crowd interaction portion, so I just assume most of you went to public school, right? And most of you probably your sex ed teacher was also the gym teacher, right? <laughs> and we're okay with that, really? Like the guy in tube socks, he's gonna <laughs> teach you how to find the clit. That guy, <laughs> what they trust him with teaching sex, the court doesn't trust him with full custody, okay. <laughs> I, I just I don't understand what is like the criteria for for teaching sex ed It's like, well, you know, you need a master's degree to teach trigonometry at this school. But uh, Rick, I see you got a cigarette behind your ear. So I know you fuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. And it, I, but he, he, it, it, it dawned on me that that man was also the hardest working man at that school. Right. Because not only did he teach sex ed. I teach gym. He also taught driver's ed. He taught me how to drive. <laughs> I still remember his lessons. He's like, if you're going to drink, don't have sex. If you're going to drive, wear a condom. All right. He taught, taught sex ed. He taught driver's ed. He, he, he coached the football team. And, and he had just enough time last year to storm the Capitol. Right. <laughs> and that man is kids back. That's all I'm saying, dude. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. Well, I'm trying to figure out if we should end this on a on a on a on a controversial note, but I think why not? Let's do a little controversy. Why not? Let's talk about you know it's in the news: Roe v. Wade, abortion, and look, I'll, I'll try and play both sides here. I'll try to appeal to both sides, you know, because I, I I personally am, am pro-choice, and I know I have friends who are pro-life. A lot of my friends who are pro-life live in the countryside, live in rural areas. And I understand being pro-life out there. I, I do, you know, because most of them have never been stuck in traffic at three in the morning before. Because <laughs> nobody in a traffic jam is pro-life. <laughs> nobody stuck in bumper to bumper traffic thinks there should be more people on this planet right now. <laughs> No, your only thought when you're in a traffic jam is there would be somebody dead up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. 
I don't know, man. It's just, it, it, it just, you don't have enough people in your way. That's why you're pro-life sometimes. Like, <laughs> you, you know, if, if you're ever in line at, I don't know, Six Flags or, or something, you, you, you want less people in the world at that moment, right? Like, all I know is every abortion that doesn't happen is another day I have to wait to get a PS5, okay? <laughs> I know maybe some of you think abortion is murder, but murdering people in Grand Theft Auto is pretty fun, right? Anyways, but I also understand the other side of the argument because I don't think there should be uh, unrestricted access to abortion because at that point, we lose unplanned pregnancies. And I was thinking about what would the world look like without any unplanned pregnancies? First off, there would be two people on this show right now. I guarantee that. <laughs> yeah, some of you are only here because your parents are like, eh, fuck it, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, your parents your parents reacted to you the same way you react when, like, the free subscription runs out on HBO. You're like, ah, shit, I forgot to cancel that pregnancy, damn it. <laughs> now, we, now, we got a, now we got a child for 18 years, I guess we'll do it. Anyways, like... Can you imagine a world just with people from planned pregnancies? Can you imagine how terrible it just everybody is named Excelsior and River and it has peanut allergies and shit like that. <laughs> everybody just everybody from a planned pregnancy just is like, I, I I think the book version was better. Those people, you want those people? <laughs> there, there's no more fast and furious movies, no more roller coasters, man. I yeah, we can't have them anymore because everybody gets nosebleeds. That's. I, just, <laughs> I think people from unplugged, unplanned pregnancies are stronger, okay? Because they came from sperm that found a way, right? <laughs> <laughs> that sperm had to break through an expired condom and do like a Tokyo drift around an IUD, and it was drunk the whole time. That's. <laughs> A strong person is all I'm saying. All right, that's my time, everybody. Thanks so much for having me. I'm John McCombs. Keep going for John. Yeah, John, I always wonder why Dix doesn't sell dildos. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, I want to thank everybody who had the show. Uh, the comics did a wonderful job. I left uh, constantly. So uh, thank you very much. Um, Jeff, John, April, great job, great job. Um, and I want to thank you for coming. Please, if you had a good time, uh, tell somebody. Uh, have them check out Button Down Comedy. We do that and forth uh, Friday of every month. Um, and as long as we have comics who want to watch it, I will keep doing it. So uh, thanks for coming. And have any questions please uh the uh, uh comics put their social media if you enjoy them follow them john uh, go ahead and put your social media in the chat if somebody wants to follow uh the way you can see these comics might be in your area might could see them live and in person but uh, again thanks for coming and please drive home safe <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys have a great night, and I will see you guys in two weeks. Bye-bye.